Hello guys and welcome back to episode 2 of my new UK series, The Isle of Wight. And firstly, I want to start off with a big thank you to everyone who commented and liked and done anything relating to episode 1. The feedback was absolutely amazing and, well, as you can see on screen here, we pretty much started off with a small little ferry port in the small town of Fishbourne, started to lay down some of the houses and well I think it turned out really nice in the end I'm really happy with the uh, the LUT and the theme everything we put down really did work well but what's next I hear you ask well episode 2 we're gonna still carry on with the Fishbourne area I don't want to go too heavy into this area I still want to move around the map quite quickly as opposed to how I have been doing it on Monaco so what we're going to do today we're going to kick start we're going to get straight into some plopping some houses and it's going to be a big sort of uh, residential build up episode I guess but there is a section here where we're just starting to lay down that I'm really really excited to build so this area here right by the creek or the river whatever you want to class it as are some very small houses but they have their gardens basically onto the creek so they have little piers going off where they can go and collect their boats and go for a little sail etc so that's really cool and I'm really looking forward to placing that down and there's also a little industrial sort of mini warehouse area just on the corner as well. Um, so we're going to be working on that. And also there's a bit more housing estate area behind this that I want to really push out. So that's what we're going to plan to do today. Um, that's where we're going to kick it off. So we're going to work firstly here as you see on these houses. Now these houses here, um, I think in terms of the UK build itself, there's a huge variety now on the workshop. But... There's going to be times where certain houses don't quite look right if you're from the island, of course. Um, and my game, my goal here with the housing side of things is to really show the development and the changes of time throughout the houses. And what I mean by that is you'll see that we've got these very nice bright orange type houses. These are quite modern houses for UK builds. Typical new developments look like this as opposed to what you're seeing on screen now. These are a bit more older housing, so I want to try and show the development on that. So what I mean by that is the main roads would typically have older houses on because those roads were there first, thus those houses were built first. Um, and then a the little side roads off of that where new housing estates have been built are where you see the newer houses. So I'm going to try and replicate that as well as I can do to really show the uh, the way of the growth of the island. And talking of growth, the growth of the channel has really changed recently. I really do appreciate everyone new that's come along and all the guys that have been here from day one or day 101. Everyone who's still here supporting the channel and enjoying the content, a big thank you to you. And it's all the nice comments that I get and the you know constructive comments as well is all I really do enjoy seeing. Ideas on things that I didn't think of, ways of doing things better. You know, I have been playing this game in this sort of state of play for a long time, but there's still times when people give me ideas and uh, methods of playing the game slightly better, slightly more um you know economical if that's the best word to use here so by all means don't be afraid to comment on the video and give me your ideas because you know this is a community project this is a game that everyone gets involved with whether you're just someone who watches the videos and enjoys the content or someone who plays the game as well it's no always nice to uh to share your ideas and it's also great to see how many of you actually are from the island or at least have visited uh, a number of times some very nice comments of people saying that they took this ferry from this particular port and it looks pretty much spot on so a huge thank you to everyone who um, suggested along those lines um, but yeah it's nice to see people from the island watching this video because you know I'm designing this project if people haven't been to the island before it's going to be an exciting project for people to look at and sort of understand the UK nature and the way that things are built and constructed um, especially in a rural way as well obviously a lot of people have seen pictures and images of London and the big cities in the UK but this island here is very unique it's very different um, but there's also parts of this island that are similar also on mainland as well so it's good to show off the English culture as it is um, and I'm really hoping that this series will do that for you 
Now back into the time lapse, we're now working on this little segment. So if you recall earlier, I mentioned we're going to be working on a little industrial warehouse area um, just at the top of the uh, the creek here. So this is a, a more industrial area where the ships are sort of left over or fixed, repaired. I'm not quite sure what this particular area or this area is actually for, but you know, in terms of pretending um, it looks that sort of thing doesn't it it's sort of a warehouse area to store your your yachts or like I say perhaps it is somewhere that people come to repair and maybe even buy and sell but it was a little a little additional part that I wanted to add in here I really like the way this just fits on the corner just before the bridge um, and it sort of breaks down the fact that we've got purely residential at the moment in the port so this adds a bit more of an industrial um, atmosphere to a, a small little town I did find it a little bit hard to find a suitable warehouse, but in the end we went with these two, which um, I think they work. Um, we didn't want to think anything too big and over the top here because it looked rather silly for what we're trying to build. So these two worked out pretty nice. Um, and the plan is here to have a little car park and I wanted to put like a lorry loading a, um, a yacht into the river. I mean, in terms of what it looks like at the end, it looks really nice in my opinion, but it's not really realistic if you look at it, but uh, that's all part of the game, isn't it? We all, we'll enjoy what, we, um, what we're what building and we'll think about the way it actually works at a later time. And I'm really pleased with the um, the cube map um, that we're using here. The water that comes with that, along obviously with the, the theme we're using, somehow looks really, really good. Um, I've always found it difficult to find a suitable sort of water color um, especially in Monaco I found it really difficult but the UK has a very very different sort of greeny dark blue water and I'm actually really happy of how this has come about we've uh, really really cracked it I think in terms of the, the water color and certainly if you go back to episode one and have a look at the the water as the ferry comes in and compare it to you know photos of the area or what you've seen before I think that really does work really well and that goes back to the comment at the start of the video that I'm really pleased with how the the LUT and uh, the actual theme really works well together and whilst talking of that uh, a lot of you have been asking if the uh, map itself will be released on the workshop so I won't be able to release the map as a map but I should be able to release it as a save game um, I need to have a look at the latest save or the best save to use for that um, and have a look at how realistic it is for you guys then to build upon. Um, if you're going to be doing a detailed build such as I am, it's going to be fine. But if you're going to look to try and make it in a map in terms of having resources around, I didn't really put down resources. Um, I'm not sure if you can put those in after the map has been created into a save game. So I need to look into that. Um, but if you are still interested, let me know in the comments. I'll post up um, some sort of a poll to see how many of you actually want to have the map and build yourself. Um, and then obviously, if there's enough of you, I will put the effort in to release that on the workshop for you. And also please keep commenting on what you want to see being built next. We've had some brilliant ideas already. A lot of people have been asking for the other ferry ports to be built. They will be at some point. Um, and also we've got the hovercraft port as well, which is going to be really fun to build. I'm really excited to do that because the island itself is one of the only, I think the only one now operating hovercrafts as an actual means of public transport. So that's uh, an interesting fact for you all to take home with you later on tonight. Um, but there's been a lot of other ideas. We've got building up the whole of Newport, which is obviously the, the main sort of town, I guess, of the island. Lots of shops there, which will be fun to work on. Uh, we've got the Carisbrook Castle as well has been um, suggested. In fact, a lot of the ideas are on my short list of what I am hoping to achieve in this new series. So keep them coming because I'm sure there's going to be something on there I have forgotten about or haven't felt about. So keep doing that, guys. One thing I have really, really enjoyed playing around with recently has been all of this grass. 
Um, I've never really experienced a lot of the sort of grass placing in the fashion I'm doing right now on screen, but you can get some really, really good looking effects here. Um, and the whole grass and plants and hedges is going to be something that I really concentrate on a lot in this series because there's a lot of uh, rural areas, um, lots of fields, lots of just plain right standard stuff really in terms of grass etc. Um, and I've found some really nice combinations. You'll see here on screen I've combined and sort of three different types of grasses. Um, and from a distance they look really really good and some of the grass textures we are we have today on the workshop is really phenomenal um, it's what makes this look even more realistic um, to play with and you know we've got to be really grateful with that because it does change the game completely now you'll see that the piers are pretty much all down now the difficulty i had was getting the uh, terrain itself at a reasonable level that the piers looked realistic at first um, the boat seemed a little bit too far down from where the pier was so I had to do a bit of terraforming you saw briefly there on camera um, and it would have been better if we could have done this a little bit more of a smoother curve across but it is what it is and I think I've dealt with it in the best way possible um, and what you can see here now on camera is we're working on a little sort of shipyard area. I looked on Google Maps at this particular area and it looks like a little storage area but also it could be for sort of hiring of the boats or maybe for sale as well. So I thought this was a nice little bit just to add in um, as a like for like build and uh, it just breaks up the area and that's what I like about the island. They have all these little quirky areas. Um, around it and it also opens up your your brain to being more inspired when you're building because rather than just building residential commercial and industrial think about it a bit more logically and think what else there could be in the areas you're building and that's what this island has really opened me up for um, and I really do think that the next series I do after this one um, if I do continue with another UK build uh, I think I'm going to have a lot more inspiration when building. And I'm certainly one to believe that the more inspiration you have, the more amazing that your builds end up looking. And a combination of all sorts, really. You don't have to just use your inspiration, but you can obviously use Google Maps and copy some places and sort of add your own little end to it. And what's fascinating about it is some people could copy a whole map and not everyone's going to know where that is um, which is you know one of those things that's what's so good about this game being imaginative and it's uh, an aspect of my life I've not really had chance in certainly in my sort of job um, to really be able to take advantage of <laughs> the um, inspiration and the creativity that flows inside my blood so this game really does let me let loose so to speak in these sort of aspects which is absolutely amazing but tell me guys, how and what makes you play this game so much? Are you similar to me? Are you trying to let loose of some creativity? Or do you just enjoy placing down buildings and making things look realistic? Let me know in the comment section below.
Now you may have noticed during that little time lapse that the uh, the way I'm placing down buildings is a combination of a number of different methods. So we're using the pre-built, pre-detailed ones and just adding a little bit of detail here and there from those. But we're also using more of the template buildings you can see above here on the screen whereby I have to also create the gardens themselves and detail the whole thing really. So it's nice to have a combination of both. Um, certainly the already detailed ones save a lot of time in the sort of areas that you don't tend to see or need to see the detail for works perfectly well for that but then as you see on the screen now the ones above where we're going to create this little park needed to be an unusual shape to well to make it fit the area so by using those type of buildings we're able to create our own fences around there and make things just a little bit more natural and realistic. Not all of these houses have the same sort of uh, gardens, uh, fence lines, etc. So this just makes us be able to be a bit more creative and make things not look too boxy. Now it's up to detailing this park. And I tell you what, it's been a long time since I actually built a nice little UK park. And the assets and props and everything on the workshop now are so different to when I last did. If any of you recall the previous series I did, which was UK based, which was called the British Challenge, I tell you what, props have come a long, long way since then. They were brilliant back then, but the uh, variety we have now and the detailing level means you can make things so much more realistic. And as you can see here, we're just creating a very simple uh, a state park is probably what I would class it as. So these are the small little parks that are just around the uh, the local area, just for you know nothing huge, just a little bit here, a few swings and etc. And this is pretty much a typical typical build, I guess, um, for a UK park. The only thing I would add is they're not as colourful and bright as um, these uh, sort of soft play pads that we put down but they there are some that do have that and they obviously are changing a little bit you'll see there I've got in a bit of PO it's not an episode about some PO work is it with the with myself so that was down there and yeah really really pleased with how that part came out it was a, a nice different sort of build to do um, which I haven't done for a while and that's why I've chosen to do a build such as this because it's so different to anything that I'm doing currently, certainly different to Monaco. And I tell you what, these little posts here are something so common when you look at UK builds, especially sort of park and little rural areas. They're used so much and they look so good in this little area here. So a great big shout out to the creator of this, who is Sparks. So next up we're going to start to place down some more of the houses believe it or not and uh, the thing you'll notice is the way that these are because they are so blocky in there sort of the way they are placed down with the fences already arranged I'm going to have to and I've been thinking about this the best way of doing this and I think the best way is just by putting some trees in between the gaps so there are some aspects as you can see um, on the screen now there's a few areas where there's some very thin sort of triangle shapes that we can't really do much with it's almost like it's lost and broken space um, so I'm probably just going to fill these up with some bushes um, some trees just to make it look a little bit more appealing um, I think it will hide the so-called nastiness of those those aspects um, so I'm not too concerned about that I think the overall look of the build um, will sort of hide away those parts and you won't really notice them being like that so that's the plan there now this little section here had me in a number of thoughts first of all this big grass area on the left hand side I was thinking at first to make it into a bit of a farmland because in this area there are a bit of farmland sort of close by the uh, the creek um, but it didn't quite suit the look of what I was going for and I have done a few more houses than there are um, in the real world of the Isle of Wight so in the end I thought I'd just make this into sort of a bit of a derelict grassy land so we're gonna place down some of the beautiful grass assets and props down here um, again, I found some really nice ways to combine the different types of grass, some of the larger compound bits and some of the smaller aspects as well. 
um, putting a few bushes in as well just to make things come to life and um, yeah it's amazing what you can make out of all of these grass assets now um, you I mean the texture levels themselves of the grass does look good and for back gardens they're perfect you don't need to add any additional props of grass on top of it but for those parts I felt we needed to now a UK build is not a UK build without a little pub on the corner so that's what we're doing here now um, this is just a, an extra bit I decided to put in it's not actually here um, in Fishbourne but I think it's a perfect little spot to add a nice little cute pub so we're gonna add this in here um, make a little bit of a garden as well around it and just detail the area you'll see I struggled at first to try and find the best means of adding a little car park around the back I went between thoughts of having the whole thing as a back garden um, but in the end I thought a car park was a bit more uh, suitable for this so you'll see a bit of a struggle here on camera but um, we find a way in the end and the issue I had was um, I needed to find the flat land for the car park to go on it because it's not going to be a proper car park in the sense of uh, functional it's more just a, a prop version car park so that's why we're putting down the, uh, the decals instead of putting the actual workable car parks down but that often works quite well in these sort of builds especially when you don't want to have a lot of traffic going in and out of small areas so for me personally this works out quite nice um, and taking advantage of these hedges as well I wanted to hide away some of the uh, ugliness of some of the buildings um, which works quite nicely in this respect and also it makes sense having a higher up bush stroke hedge stroke fence um, from where the actual pub is So that pretty much brings us now to the end of episode two. I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's certainly now starting to take some shape and I've got so many ideas on where and what we can do next. It's just, just a case of choosing which one we go for. Um, I know the next episode is going to be the final sort of latter stages of detailing Fishbourne so we're going to be doing a lot of detailing on some of the houses and the gardens so keep an eye out for that um, beyond that we've got a very very good model to show off as well which has been created by a very well-known creator of UK assets and it's gonna be one that's gonna really really shine on the workshop so 
that's probably going to be on episode four now um and yeah beyond that guys let me know your thoughts please 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 like the video if you did enjoy it if you haven't already and you're also enjoying the videos please feel free to subscribe as well other than that guys follow me on my social media platforms and if you're feeling extra generous i have a patreon page as well which will give you some early access to videos and a chance to jump into the discord for some more one-on-one -on -one private chats Thank you all for watching, enjoy the cinematics, and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and all the best.